Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode two of the video series where we're taking a look at all the different software put out by On1. In this episode, we're going to take a closer look at Browse. Now, if you're like me and you're a Lightroom user, you might not use the Browse module in On1 very much because it's very much like the library module in Lightroom. It has a lot of the same functions. The advantage of um, On1's Browse, though, is that it's a little lighter weight. You don't have to import images into it. And for me at least, the import process usually takes quite a long time because I add keywords and I do all this stuff during import. And usually when I do that in Lightroom, it takes a long time. So if you're always, you know, the type of photographer where you're in a hurry, you're a photojournalist, you're, um, you know, a sports photographer and you gotta get the images out there right away, you might prefer using browse because you do not have to import any of your images. And still, you could do a lot of sorting and do a lot of those uh, powerful things that you could do with the Lightroom library module, you could still do in browse. browse. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a look around and I'm gonna show you some of the features of browse. First of all, as you could see, it's laid out pretty much like the library module in Lightroom for those of you that use Lightroom. And I should add, if you're not a Lightroom user, you might use Browse every day. This might be the your starting point where you're going to begin. Uh, you're going to sort images, find out which ones are your best, and then uh, decide which ones you're going to process further using some of the other modules in on One Photo 10. So, uh, keep that in mind. Um, I know I'm probably speaking um, a little bit to both parties, meaning people that use Lightroom and those that do not use Lightroom. All right. Now, as you can see in the middle, we have some images. This is called Grid View. We're looking at a view of the images that happen to be in this folder. Now, how you navigate around in um, in browse is in the left hand panel and you can see right away when you open up browse it will sh find all your drives so any drive that is local to the computer or an external drive that is plugged into the computer I'm on my iMac today and I have three external drives I have a Lightroom drive a media server drive and one I call Morganti drive and then I have the internal internal Macintosh drive it also will bring up any cloud storage that you're using. And I use Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. You could create albums. We're going to do that in a little bit. And we could do some filtering and whatnot. But the main thing is you'll be able to drill down to your images right from here. So you're not going to be importing anything. So uh, you know, right now, I have these birds. I have it on my local drive. I could drill down to any folders on my drive. There it is right there. I call it Nature Walk Birds. Um, a faster way, which you may want to do, is there's some shortcuts over here. The very top one is desktop. So you click on that, and that is any images or folders that I happen to have on my desktop. And as you can see, I do not have any. This is my pictures folder, and there I have some folders there. And that is where I got the nature walk birds from, right there. Below that, I have favorites, and I don't have any favorites right now, but we're going to do that in a little bit. Right here are the actual drives that you know are over here. We have the Lightroom drive, the internal Macintosh drive, the media server, and the Morganti drive. Here are cloud storage locations, and right here are albums, and we don't have any albums right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to my picture folder and we're going to go to our nature walk birds and if you look up here this is kind of a little breadcrumb trail of where we are and where we came from meaning going back up the hierarchy of folder structure so i'm in nature walk birds that's in my picture folder that's on the tony folder and my users folder on my macintosh hd so you could actually those are clickable so you could click back along the path and you know uh, Move, move amongst your folders and images and stuff like that. Okay, we're in the browse module and we're gonna go through our images. Right now we're in grid view. So we're seeing all the images that are in that folder. If I click on one, I could double click on it and we could see that image a little closer. 
if I want to get back to grid view, I, I could hit the G key on my keyboard, and that will bring you to grid view. Another way you could do this is just hit the space key on your keyboard. So if I want to see this image close up, I could hit the space key on my keyboard, and it will show me a close up view of that image all by itself. And then I could hit the space key again, and it will go back to grid view. So you could toggle back and forth between these two different views by hitting the space bar. Now, typically, I don't know like you, I like to rate images and, and you, you know, do picks, uh, which ones I want to process and things like that. And you can see along the top of the image, we have some stars, five to be precise. And we have this little box. Then to the right of that, we have the heart and the X. So what you could do is you could just rate it by stars by clicking here. So if I want to give that three stars, I click on the third star over. I gave it three stars. Another way you could do it is you could just hit the numbers one through five on your keyboard. So, of course, one is one star, and then five would be five stars. Right here are color uh, codes that you could give to the image. You could uh, click here, and you could see there's red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. There's also numbers next to them. So if I want to give this a yellow... Uh, code, I could just hit the 7 key on my keyboard and it gave it the yellow code. Then it has favorite. It's either favorited or not favorited or excluded or rejected. Um, you could just click this little heart icon there and that's a favorite. Or you could click it again and it's not favorited. Or you could click the little X and it's rejected. Click the X again to turn off that reject flag. Now, uh, you could do this with keyboard shortcuts also. Uh, you could uh, hit P. That's like a pick. So you're picking it. That's favoriting it. You hit the U, you're unpicking it. Or you could hit the X, you're rejecting it. Okay. So um, just, you know, I think it's a lot easier with keyboard shortcuts. And, and for those of you that use Lightroom, those are the same exact keyboard shortcuts that you use in Lightroom. Um, okay. So... I gave this five stars in a yellow label and I favorited it. I could click over to the next image and then do it all over again. I could, let's say I want to give this one five stars, all right? Um, so I give it five stars. Then I could hit the right arrow key and go to the next image. A faster way to do that is if you go up to photo and you just click auto advance, then you'll automatically go through the images. So um, I don't want to rate that one. So I'm just going to rate things right now. So I'm, I hit to my right arrow key. I want to give this one five stars. So I'm going to hit the five key. See it automatically advanced. So this could help you save some time. Uh, let's um, not rate that one. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key. I'm going to give that one five stars. And then I'm hitting the right arrow key and giving that one five stars. So I have a number of images here with five stars. So you could do that with auto advance. Remember that's in the photo right here. You could turn it off or on. And that will not only work with the starring, but if you're favoriting something like doing a pick, if I hit P for picking this uh, photo, then it will automatically advance to the next one. Uh, so you could do that with ratings, colors, and picks uh, for each of the images. All right, so now we did some rating and we know which ones we like and don't like. So um, we could create an album. Another thing, actually, before I do that, what I should talk about is up here, favorites and watched. Any folder that you seem to go to a lot, you could create it a favorite. And then it will be up here and you could more easily access it. So you don't necessarily have to drill down all the time to get it. So I could just grab this nature walk birds and pull it up here to favorites. Now it's in my favorites. Uh, and then it will be right here too. So I could click there and there it is there. Now, another advantage of this, it's being watched. And you can see this little like circle right here where it's rotating. Any of the folders, when we're accessing them, on one is reading the preview that is embedded in the raw file or in the TIFF file or whatever is there. So it's reading that embedded preview and putting that preview up here. When you pull anything out and put it in favorites slash watched, on one is now creating its own set of previews. 
and this will be much faster. So you're going to find that your processing will be much quicker on your favorites slash watch folders. So I encourage you to use it because it will really help and it will make things go a lot quicker. And now, right now, I mean, I only have like 10 images here. I mean, usually if I do a photo shoot, I have a couple hundred images. If you put it up there, you have to wait a little while for it to form the, the previews. But then it's really very, very quick. And when you scroll through all the images, it'll go very, very quickly. Right now, if I had 200 images here, and it, if I wasn't in a favorite slash watched folder, and I scrolled through them, uh, as the new images appeared from the bottom, it would take a while for them to appear because on one has to read the preview from the file. So it takes a little longer. So that's why you'd want to do favorites watched. Now, we could do albums. Uh, so let's take all our five star images. So I clicked on that first one. I'm going to hold the command key in and click on the second one. If you have um, a PC, of course, would hold the control key in. So I'm just going to keep holding my command key in and click on all these five star uh, images. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on any one of them and drag it over to this little hotspot where it says drag here for new album. And when you do that, it's going to ask me a name. I'm going to write um, favorite, oops, favorite birds. That sounds kind of odd, but we'll do that. Okay. So now I have an album called favorite birds. And then you could easily access that as well. And that, of course, is now right here. So we could go to our albums. We could go to our cloud sources. We could go to our drives. We could go to our favorites and whatnot. Now, another type of album is called a smart album. And it's got its advantages over a normal album. And let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's select those same images those five star images okay and we're gonna click this little plus sign here and there's two choices create album create smart album so we're gonna create a smart album and um, actually you know what I, I actually made a mistake not that it was a mistake I didn't have to select anything all right so so let's undo that just for the sake of argument and then go down to create smart album and now we're actually going to tell it what to look for and I want to look for all my five star images um, you could do a date range like images you took the last two days something like that the ones you did today and you create a smart album you could search for a specific aperture setting a specific focal length uh, you know all my 1600 ISOs, you know, go in a smart album, something like that. Uh, we're not going to do any of that right now, but I mean, that's how powerful this is. You could really um, get specific images, images you created today with your telephoto lens at 500 millimeters, you know, stuff like that. Um, you could put those all in a smart album if you so choose. Now, we're going to give the album a name. I'm going to call it um, my. Uh, favorite birds smart album oops okay favorite birds smart album and we're going to click okay now if i go up to favorite bird smart album you can see all those five star birds are there just like in my favorite birds album now here's the key difference between a smart album and a regular everyday album. Let's go back just to our folder, okay, with all the birds. Let's say I don't want this one to be five star anymore. I'm going to make it one star, okay? Let's go back to our favorite birds album. You could see that it's still in there. All those are there, but that one is now one star. Let's go to Favorite Bird Smart Album. You can see it's gone. Favorite uh, Smart Albums are more dynamic. So any other image I might create as a five-star image will automatically go in this album, even if it's two years from now. 
If I load images in and I rate one as five stars, it will go in this album. So you could really do some sorting here right away. Uh, you could sort, um, you know, let's say you do want to have all your telephoto lens, your spe some specific lens you use to go in a specific album. Um, you could do it. So every time that lens is used, it will go in that specific smart album. So that's the real advantage of using smart albums. Now, uh, real quick, I should talk about the uh, the previews here themselves. You could change the size of them with this slider down here. You can make them smaller or larger by sliding that slider. You could also at the ends, you could just click on uh, these little squares and make them incrementally bigger or smaller. Uh, you also could hit the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to make them bigger and smaller if you so choose. Also, um, I think it's under view. Uh, you could, right now, as you could see, there are this could, when you have a lot, this might get annoying to you, like when you have some verticals with horizontals and you have them cropped differently and they're all going to be different sizes. So you could go to the view and you could just have square thumbnails if you choose. Now, of course, it's going to crop out a lot of the image to show it, but it makes everything a little more neater if you're, if you're into that. It doesn't bother me, so I don't, uh, I don't worry about uh, that. Um, Okay, the other thing you could do when you're clicked on an image, you could see it's showing the file name down here. Well, if you go to view, you could go to always show file name, and then it will always show the file names along the bottom if you want to do that. So that's some things with the uh, actual thumbnails if you're interested in doing that. Now over to the right, uh, we have the metadata and some info about what you shot. So up here at the top, you can see I use Nikon D800E, 500 millimeters uh, stuff here. Then we have metadata. You could edit some of this. You could change, you know, the author name. You could put a description of the image, add keywords. Uh, I already have some in there. Below that, we have EXIF data. Most of that you cannot modify, but you can put a comment or your GPS location there. The IPTC data you can modify. You could put your address, or anything here you could modify in that. And if you don't want to see all this stuff, you could just click none and it will go away. Personally, it doesn't bother me. I usually have something open there. Smart photo history. You'll see when we start processing images in the um, uh, actual, the other modules, that there's... Um, there's a thing called Smart Photo where it will remember all your edits. And um, it's kind of a good non-destructive way to be editing. And then all that history will be here for each, uh, you know, any image that is a smart image. And, um, we'll, you know, it's really a good way to process. The only thing is it does take up more space. The uh, images are larger because they're keeping the history in layers and things like that intact. To the right of that are the other modules, and we touched on this in the overview we did in episode one. We have the enhance, enhance module, the effects module, the portrait module, the layers module, and the resize module. Way down here at the bottom, we could export the image from here, and we're preparing to export, and when it does, it will come up with this export resize uh, box and some settings here. I'm not going to get into this in too much detail right now. We are going to be doing this a little later when we actually are finishing an image. We're actually processing an image um, and we're ready to export it. We could share the image on you know, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, all those different sites with that key there. Also, each of these panels could be opened or closed by hitting these arrows on either side. You also could hit the tab key and you could close them both at the same time. And the tab key will open them up. You also could resize them. If you hover over where the line is right there, you could make them smaller or larger up to a point, up to a point. All right, on, the, on either side, you could do that. So that's pretty much an overview of Browse and some of the things you could do in Browse, the most important things, in my opinion, that you could do in Browse. Now, in the next episode, we're going to go use on one enhance and we're going to actually enhance an image with that plugin now um i don't know maybe i'll run it now what's your opinion on it should i run it as a plugin from lightroom or photoshop or should i run it from here uh, just let me know what your opinion is 
it'll accomplish the same thing. It's just where you're starting from is a little different. All right, that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.